really has the torque. I mean, you can see there, we can literally just drive up hills. It doesn't even, like, you can just stop on the hill and then just keep going. You can wheelie it because the amount of torque it has. Like, oh, I just, I flipped it. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic with some more piston stuff. I've really been going on a piston bender lately and I know a lot of people want to see a lot of different piston stuff and uh, we did multiplayer Monday with the piston challenge which was you know make a vehicle that powers itself with pistons and we all opted for, for something pretty, well except for Moombo I guess, but we all opted for something that pushed the wheel uh, and this is basically the simplest form of that. Now there's one obvious problem with it. Unless you get the timing dead perfect, um, with one piston only controlling a wheel, it is very possible for you see to just reverse the direction depending on how long you hold it, as when you hold it perfectly straight, um, it is technically centered. So you're relying on momentum to carry the wheel through each of those rotations to the point where you can, you can see that I just accidentally reversed it. So it's not a very sound method and uh, you know you can you can kind of help this by increasing the weight by adding, you know, a couple wheels or a flywheel or something like that. I, of course, decided to be a little different, and instead of powering a piston directly to a wheel, I, uh, I powered the pistons to this car here. And so I've got two pistons there, and if I push the button, you can see that they activate, which in turn spin a gear, which then goes to the wheel. But basically the same mechanism, so you're really relying on yourself to, uh, to get the momentum right. And, uh, you know, it's very frustrating. So I've got a lot more more stuff around here, but I was basically playing around with pistons after that. And I said, you know what? I've got to make a reliable piston engine. And so the piston engine that I used for the, uh, the big realistic car build using thruster pistons, it was okay, but the, the thrusters use a sensor to time it based on the rotation, and uh, it's very jerky movement. And with these actual pistons, you can have everything attached in a very nice and sort of clean assembly. The biggest problem with building with pistons is the fact that you can't start them pre-extended. And on a real engine, you wouldn't have all the cylinders starting at the zero position and then extending all at the same time. They would extend out one at a time or in pairs um, or in triples or whatever, but they would extend in a proper pattern so that there's always one providing power while the others are doing nothing. This is a V4. Now it has some sensors here, just measuring the positions of this piston here to determine when to reverse the mechanism and uh, it uses this massive flywheel weight but it is just a single sort of stroke engine all four pistons fire at the same time and then all four retract at the same time but it'll it'll always spin in the same direction and it'll spin forever and it works quite well now it's got a ton of power but of course the problem being it needs this massive flywheel like massive because it has to have enough momentum to carry the weight of this entire axle through the point where the pistons aren't moving at all and so if we b reduce this flywheel, you will just chop it off there. You can see they won't actually rotate fully. It'll just go back and forth and back and forth. And you know, it makes it kind of useless. So we'll just put this back on here, but there we go. So now you can see when we put that back on, it starts rotating forward. And so it needs a relatively massive weight. And this is of course, because it is using that single stroke, but this single stroke engine will have the power of four pistons behind it. So it'll have a lot of, of torque but uh, you can see they're very jerky and it'll stop at that extreme position. So not a very useful engine mechanism, although really cool. And so then I said, well, you know what? This is useless. I mean, you can't really power a vehicle with something that jerky. Your vehicle is just going to go all over the place. So we need something a little smoother. So I said, well, you know, to make something smoother, we need to have one piston start out and one piston start in. And the way to do that is actually really simple, which is if you just split your axle, they both start in, and then as soon as you start, you just rotate your one axle piece out, and it'll just kind of force the piston out like that. And again, same system as before, there's a sensor to measure when this piston is in, and there's a sensor measuring when this piston is in, and basically because pistons have no collision, the sensor won't detect until that small pipe piece, the very edge of it, gets right here, and then it'll, it'll switch the bit. And this makes, you know, a little bit smoother of an engine. Um, you know, you see here we don't need nearly as big of a flywheel, although this engine is nice and compact, there is still that dead point where one is fully extended and one is retracted, and there's no movement in between those two dead points. So with this one, there's there's one dead point, but it's very aggressive because all the pistons are retracted, uh, but this one, there, there's also a couple dead points per cycle. And so it's not very efficient. You basically, you need more, more pistons, and so... That's where we get into this design. You can see all of them are lined up very simply. Uh, these pistons in the middle here, these are just no collision blocks, so they allow this to freely rotate through. 
Uh, but each section here, so this section is free. This one will go 90 degrees offset, 90 degrees offset, and 90 degrees offset. And the, uh, the pistons will keep that axle nice and straight. And so if we deploy this one, as soon as it starts, it's got a 90 degree offset on each piston. And then there's just four sensors here in a ring with this weird Tetris shaped piece thing. And basically each sensor will activate one piston as long as the switch is turned on. So each of these AND gates activates one of these pistons. And so because of the natural 45 degrees, you can see the first one to activate will be this one. Um, I believe, and it'll push it forward, and then this one, and then that one, I, th I think it rotates to the right, but I'm not sure, but I think, yeah, see, there it goes. And so basically what's happening is when each piston gets to the point where it's next up in line, you can see this one here clearly is gonna push next because it has a straight line to push from, and that one is actually, in fact, rigged up to this sensor right there. See, that sensor goes to here, which goes to this, this piston here. And so it's got the straight line. None of the other ones will be activated. They'll just all be kind of like getting dragged along through the process. And then this one will have just finished its activation here. This, this guy that's fully extended. And then this one will activate, which will push this forward to where that guy is, which means this one will in turn be where that one is. And the chain just continues down the line. And it makes for a relatively smooth engine. I mean, it, it is very smooth. It'll always spin in the one direction, which is great because depending on how you have the 90 degree offset, you can change which direction it spins in. But it'll always spin in one direction. It has four pistons worth of power and it'll it'll spin relatively straight, but it is, it is still pretty bulky. Um, you know, very horizontally bulky. But the solution to, of course, the horizontal size is, is sometimes make a vertical size engine. And I basically was trying to make uh, a radial engine. Now, I'll, I'll put a link to, to one of the YouTube videos that really explains it quite well in the description below. The idea being that all of them rotate the center crankshaft. So it's almost like direct power. It's it's very it's very interesting stuff. It's very hard to explain unless you've seen a, a picture of it. Um, so again, I go encourage you if you are curious to go look at that link. But what I tried to do was make as close to a radial engine and scrap mechanic as I could. And of course, the hardest part being you have to be able to put stuff on a lift. So on a lift, this looks kind of interesting. And we've got all four pistons here, which are all attached with a free floating bearing to this one center piece. But you can notice all four pistons have to maintain a proximity to each other. Now this center bearing piece gets swung out 90 degrees from the center axle. And that's what causes it to get um, a, a default starting position. You can see there, so it swings out 90 degrees. Now, we know that the first piston we'd have to activate in the same principle as this engine. The first piston we activate is this one to push this down, which then pushes this down, which means this one activates and so on. And so you will get an engine that essentially does the same thing as this, but all the pistons you can see are all in the same plane of reference. So watch this. And it looks really weird because that X is technically speaking not actually ever moving per se. I mean, it's jerking a little bit back and forth, but overall you're just rotating the crankshaft. You know, I thought it was pretty neat and uh, I encourage you guys to go check that out if you're interested. So of course, you know, this wouldn't be satisfying enough for a video. Everyone's like, oh cool, you made some engines. A bunch of other people have been making engines. I know it's super popular uh, and everybody wants to have engines. So I decided to put these two engines on a car because they are the smoothest and they do work the best. And I personally thought well, you know what? Let me know in the comments what you guys think, but I personally like the radial one better, but of course it uh, it doesn't get as much speed or ability. So we're gonna we're gonna start with that one first. So if we take the radial engine and we put it on a car here, uh, this is a pretty pretty nifty car. So we've got the radial engine mounted horizontally here down below, so it's gonna spin it kind of like a, a corkscrew almost, and then that goes through a transfer axle just using some suspension pieces to this double gear system. And this gear system works really well, meshes really well, which then goes to another axle, again, suspension, just to allow that to be mounted to a beam, which then goes all the way back to another axle with just a piston to mount to a beam. And then that goes to another transfer, which then goes to the back axle with four wheels. And so we can just, there's no reverse, uh, cause I don't have a gearbox or anything set up, but of course we can press one and that will spin the radial engine and it'll move, you know, at a pretty decent pace. Uh, it's relatively consistent. You can see there, once you get going, there's a few little jerky motions, but the nice thing is if the radial engine does slow down, the sensors on the top of that engine uh, will allow it to actually, you know, adjust for any speed compensations when going up a hill and stuff like that. But it does work relatively well. You can see there it does jerk a bit uh, with the gear teeth and stuff, but uh, overall not too bad. We'll just get going here. Perfect. You can see the nice thing about these piston engines is they have so much torque. 
compared to a gas engine or electric engine they don't spin the tires they just they they literally grind their way through everything like they're just incredibly powerful engines despite how slow they are now of course when you turn them off uh they completely lock up the tires and you don't get you get complete braking so very cool um but not not exactly the fastest things in the world but you see there we're just gonna drive over this train and they're very quiet this is like you know you can creep up on people with your with your piston car just very very quiet experience but overall just really kind of awesome to watch go and just to realize how it's actually driving there and so you know that that one works pretty good it's obviously got a transaction we can put a gearbox under here um i don't want to use the radial engine for that though i am definitely going to remake the real car with probably a bigger piston engine than these because these ones are powerful but i want something even bigger i of course decided to put the uh, straight line engine on the body and i put a lot of metal here you can see just to help weigh the body down uh, it was very light and the piston engine actually has enough force because all the pistons are acting on one side with the radial engine they all kind of counteract each other but with this one they all kind of push in the one direction and i was actually sliding the car until i put more weight on it but uh, this one has the pistons cranked up a little bit quicker. I think they're all on max speed. And you can see there, this is a straight drive of the uh, engine axle right back into the back axle there. And uh, it really, like you can see there, you can even wheelies off the start. And it can really get going there. It really has the torque. I mean, you can see there, we can literally just drive up hills. It doesn't even, like, you can just stop on the hill and then just keep going. And you can wheelie it because of the amount of torque it has. Like, oh, I just, I flipped it. But that's the thing. With these piston engines, it's not like your normal engine you have a straight drive of piston straight to your wheels and it's got a silly amount of power you can see they're just wheeling its way out of it but again very creepy and quiet sounding but anyways let me know in the comments down below what you guys want to do uh, i definitely want to remake the realistic car i think now with these kind of piston engines uh, we can make stuff a lot less laggy and maybe put a few gears on it and uh you know get something at least with a forward and reverse maybe a high and a low speed and uh, get some proper steering and make a car you know with this size of a piston engine we could probably make a car if we put the piston engine in the underbelly we might be able to actually make a car you know similar to like uh one of one of my trucks or something that i made before uh, but I, I think i'd gear it towards something that's definitely you know meant to have a lot of torque and not necessarily a lot of speed like a tractor pull or something but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think and uh, what you think of making a real car again. Hit that like button if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already for more Scrap Mechanic and uh, bringing back some other videos as well. Gonna bring back some Logic Bots and some Brick Rigs as well. I know I've gotten away from them, but uh, of course with the Piston update, I've just been way too busy just tinkering with way too many things, but make sure you guys hit those buttons down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see y'all next time.